Here I am. <laughs> I do believe I'm on finally. Yes, here I am everyone. Oh my goodness. Well, welcome to Metaphysical Communion 16, St. Patrick's Day Celebration Readings. Finally, the last few weeks have been quite a trial to get broadcasting up and running. And once again this evening, it's been another event. I tried, as I originally um, advertised, going on YouTube, everything looked wonderful, but then audio just failed. I've been trying now to get on Facebook Live, and there was issues for some reason also. But finally at 10, 12, I'm finally on with all of you. So, welcome to the program. And we're here to do live readings, spot readings for you guys for the next hour. And this is a tradition of St. Patrick's Day celebration and energy and religion. So, focusing on those energies and that belief system of ancient Ireland, we go back in time to the 5th century to when St. Patrick was born. He was kidnapped at the age of 16 and taken to Ireland. From there, you know, he worked, you know, as a shepherd for all that time and then was able to escape six years later and return back to his home in Roman Britain. From there, he stayed for a while and then returned, you know, to Ireland. He found God during his six years you know, living in Ireland as he was shepherding and doing his work. And the call back to the country was so great, he did return and became a religious figure as we know. And he preached through all of Northern Ireland, greatly through Ireland, preaching Christianity and converting the people there to Christianity. He became very revered you know, for all of his work, you know, there. St. Patrick passed away in the year 461. So it's been over 1,000 years or more that we have been celebrating St. Patrick and all of his good works, promoting Christianity throughout Ireland and elsewhere. And there are several, you know, allegories associated with him. He apparently tried to dismiss the Celtics you know, in Ireland, in converting people to Christianity. And henceforth, this is where the tale came that he tried to rid or rid the snakes you know, from Ireland. That's an allegory because in Ireland, there is no, or there were, and there probably still are, no such things as snakes, especially except for those who are in zoos. So they were not indigenous, you know, to the island of Ireland. So it is an allegory, and the snakes refer to the pagans, which were known as the Celtics at that time, and ridding you know, of their spirituality from the land. So that's where that comes from. Nevertheless, St. Patrick has been revered as a great figure of miracles throughout history, the tremendous celebration once a year that we you know, celebrate, you know, comes from that and honoring him and his traditions and his beliefs. We have the great parade that happens here, St. Patrick's Day on March 17th, uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic that was canceled last year. And from what I see or have not heard, apparently it's going to be canceled again this year. If there's a celebration, it would certainly be in a much you know, smaller you know, way. So I haven't heard word yet. Anyway. Here we are, and I see that we have some guests already joining me. So, hello, Joanne. Hello, Angel. Hello, Michaela. Lovely to see you here as always. And so we're going to tap into that Celtic religion, the powers of ancient Ireland, which are so old, so strong, such history. And yes, that of course includes the Celtics and the Druids from so long ago. 
It's a very earth-based religion and magic, as we know. Many of their gods are incredibly powerful and very, very ancient. And there are many figures in their spirituality and in the mythology that are world-renowned. And there are many people to this day who attest that they have seen and received blessings or more you know, from these ancient beings of long ago. They are still just as present and vital today. So we're going to celebrate all of them this evening as we focus our energies, at least as I focus my energy, into connecting spiritually to assist with spot readings for this evening. So, welcome to the St. Patrick's Day celebration. <laughs> so let's see if we get more of an audience going. And we'll be here till like about 11, 12. I'm going to keep this short since we had to start so late, unfortunately. And I'm just hoping to work out this particular kink, you know, with YouTube regarding audio. I did test it, by the way, and the audio worked fine from the computer itself. When I did use my own audio here, it just didn't function. But turning off my stereo system here, I could hear myself clearly on YouTube when I was testing it out just the other week. So why this occurred, you know, this evening, I have no idea. Uh, either way, you know, we'll be having regular programming once again. And that means if I have to go back to Zoom and, you know, Facebook Live, so be it. And I'll be posting the programs later on on my YouTube channel, Metaphysical Communion. It's unfortunate because I wanted to broadcast live from YouTube itself and hopefully gain a bigger audience. I'll see what I can find out and see if I can get some assistance from them there, YouTube, about correcting that situation. I am no stranger to correcting situations with regards to broadcasting you know, through you know, internet media. And so we'll see what we can do. But in the meantime, we will have, you know, programming. And it will be placed on YouTube, no matter what. So people will have the accessibility to see that programming there. So enough about that. And let's focus in on this weekend. We're going to be celebrating St. Patrick's, obviously. Since it falls in the middle of the week, you know, we get to celebrate it, you know, early but this weekend. And perhaps most of next weekend also, since it's only two days away you know, from the following weekend. So I'm sure people will be doing a double weekend celebration. So here we are, and it's a nice windy evening. Temperature is dropping a bit here in New York City. I always have to give a little minor weather report about things here in this area, but it's a quiet night. And we're, you know, once again sheltered pretty much, you know, due to the pandemic, so people tend to stay in a bit more than they certainly did. Previously, even though things are getting a bit better and people are going out a little bit more, but for the most part, people are kind of still staying close to home. So we have an audience watching these things and, you know, looking for things to do and to occupy their time. And what better way than connecting and communing with spirit and seeing the wonders of the heavens and seeing what they can do to provide messages, help, guidance, you know, to those out there who are seeking and meeting. So here we are, and I'm open and attuned. So at this point, let's get started. I'm sure more people may perhaps will join in later on. So those of you out there who have a question for a spot reading, please type that in the chat, and I will focus in. Hello, Valerie. Good to see you again, as usual. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you always joining. So as I just said, please you know, type in your first question. I'll be looking in. And we'll do some spot readings. So, attuning myself to the energy of the Druids, the energies of the Celtics, the energy of the Ancient Ones, we call upon you for your help and your blessings for those who seek, those who need, those who want comfort, enlightenment. Let us open and receive in your light, and so may it be. And as we wait for a question, once again, for those of you who may be new who are watching in silence, um, you can connect with me through my 
public page on Facebook, the Angelus Colon Transpsychic Express. That is where this program is being broadcast from this evening. I always make a note of that. For those of you who request private readings with me, just private messenger me. I also have appointments scheduled there on the page that you can look into and select and let me know. You know, if you wish to have a private reading with me for further details, I will, you know, email you or messenger you back with that on how to connect, you know, for private readings. Also, as I said earlier, you can also view many of these broadcasts on Metaphysical Communion channel on YouTube. And Zia, how are you? Anything new you need to know? Well, let's see. Let's tap into that question. Well, first of all, I get a positive energy level with you, so this is good. A sense of more security and stability, which is fine. Feel a bit more rested this evening, too, so that's a good sign. Anything new you need to know? At this time, Zia, um, things seem to be going well. I don't get a sense of anything coming up that, you know, promote a sense of excitement for you. Um, I do get a sense that you're feeling stronger and more empowered about yourself. There's a sense more of tranquility with you also, which is good to feel and get a sense of. Um, they're not telling me anything for you to watch out for. Nothing bad, luckily. Just building upon what you're doing. Uh, feeling better about yourself is what I'm getting a sense and impression of also, which is a good thing. So feeling stronger, and that's what you need to focus on. And that's what they're projecting to me at this time, that you're going to get stronger, feel better about yourself. Things are going clearer. Um, financially, you should be doing better as well. You're feeling more secure. And that's a definite positive. And that's good for you and your family. But I'm talking about you in particular, not your family. Um, you are, you know, are going to be financially doing better. There's some obviously improvement you know, for you in regards especially to stability and with more. That is something they're making me see and know, especially it's more of a feeling and a sense that they're giving to me. There's a power time coming for you also for some reason. So your energy level will be higher than normal, which is good. You'll be able to achieve more, as they're telling me too. So I don't know if there's an anniversary of something coming up for you at this time in some way, but your energy level is going up. You'll be able to accomplish more. More importantly, things will be coming to you that will give you greater opportunity to do more and to achieve a better level of success. So that is what's coming up for you. So that's very positive. So hopefully that is satisfying to you. Take that message with you. If anything more comes up, I'll let you know along the way. We're just getting started here. So does anyone else have a question that they would like to address? Your birthday's coming in two weeks. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Thank you. I know there was something about an anniversary or something that was coming up because I feel the energy is just very strong around you for some reason. It's like something is going is coming up. So your level of energy, this is your, no wonder it's your birthday. It is your power time, Your as I call your power season. And if you've heard my programs before, as I've always said, you are at your strongest one month prior to your date of birth and then one month after because the sun returns back to your natal place. And that is when your date of birth, so that's when you are at your strongest. So gifts, positive energy, good things come your way. Um, good luck, not that good luck really is there, but things just happen to fall beautifully in your lap at that time. Positive things, wonderful things. So this is a good period for you, Z, and it's two weeks away, so you've already been feeling some energy surge already prior you know, to this. 
and enjoy the time period take full advantage of this you're at your heightened energy for the year you're at your strongest creatively emotionally uh, mentally so now is a good time to launch new projects and ideas that you may have percolating you know and for quite some time this is a good this is a good opportunity to put forth your new projects new ventures get it out there make it known this is the time period for that to happen great support is with you uh so for angel we have yes yes let's have a tune in with that question angel very good very important uh, for you here hmm So far, I get a good sense here of stability for you regarding this question and proper planning, which you seem to have done for the sense of things here also. So you put your things in place well. That should make things clearer for a positive beginning you know, for this. If you have to fine-tune a few things, now's the time to do it, to set it right. Um, at this point, let me see. There's something about a website involved with this venture of yours, new business. So I hope you have put that in place and make sure that you have everything you know, properly set. You don't want to have any setbacks or any errors you know, as you start this new business of yours. So make sure that you have, you know, the advertising just right. Make sure that people are able to connect and communicate properly with you, that you have your business account set up, whether whatever payment method that you're applying to, whether it's PayPal or, or whatever form or whatever, make sure that that's set perfectly and clearly. Um, that will help a great deal because that shows professionalism. It shows that you put things right. Um, apparently, you've put a lot of effort and time into this enterprise and stick with it that's the whole thing if it starts it should start well positively but if it may wane down for a bit don't get overly discouraged because that's the nature of these types of things they start with a bang for a bit and then they kind of like fizzle or can't fizzle for a bit for a, but that's when you have to be more tenacious and keep going and keep advertising and keep putting it out there and then things will start to pick up more and more i feel by the spring there'll be more of a steady flow don't expect miracles immediately the thing is don't give up if things don't look too bright afterward you know that's when you have to keep going keep, don't give up don't give up and keep going and keep building and promote 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 and get all the people that you know to promote and help you with promoting you know this also to achieve you know success and we have Nupur here hello Nupur, you are new to me here. Welcome. And, oh, I am sorry about grandfather passing or grandmother passing. Oh, dear. Let's see if I can get a sense of grandmother, Nupur. Sometimes when the spirit is new, they're not really so accessible into communicating because they are so new. And this is only just what two days ago so it depends sometimes we can't pick up you know very easier they're not really able to communicate so quickly so let's see as I go through the evening let's see what comes up and hopefully something will come through um, I have a feeling that grandmother as I'm getting a sense of this connecting with you and your energy here grandmother passed you know smoothly so have no fear I mean it she went very 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 well believe it or not so I get a feeling of, of a soft you know departure and just leaving off but very very well surrounded in a beautiful golden light I do get a sense of that very comforted so she was she left very well, very properly, and certainly ascending very well. There's no lingering or anything here, whatever. Um, they do tend to stay a little close 
to us for a while, especially after they just pass. So you may get a sense of her around you or some of your family members may and may see or hear things or experience things. That's normal under the circumstances. But I feel that she passed comforted and well. Um, if anything more comes up in the course of the evening, I will certainly let you know. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're selling jewelry, Angel. Very lovely, lovely. Good, good, wonderful. That must be lovely. That's a good way. I hope your you, your jewelry is unique, and that always st that stands out because that is always a, a selling point for these things. Uh, oh, good heavens! You're oh, you're still at the office. Okay, okay, Zia. Fine, fine, fine. Well, if if you're hearing me still, Zia, um, you can see this program again. You know, I post afterward. So if you missed what I said to you. You can catch it again. If anything more comes up, I'll let you know too, okay? Uh, as, oh, uh, by the way, um, Spirit is very close to you, you know, also. So they're coming in and making themselves known that they're certainly with you and watching over you very well. So they want you to, to know that too. So your spirits pretty much connect very well with you very clearly. For Valerie, uh, okay. All right, Valerie, this is a good sign for a new job opportunity or so for your daughter here. Um, things start, you know, well, slowly, but well, uh, it'll start to build, it'll start to build, it'll get better from what I get a sense of immediately here. Again, this is spot reading, so I'm picking up at the moment you know, for you. So it starts, you know, gentle, small, and whatever, but at least there's a sense there that it will continue. And then it'll start to build, you know, from there gradually. So there seems to be staying power here uh, for this job. So she's fortunate to get it with so much difficulty now with getting jobs right now. So hopefully that will continue and she's just going to be patient and work it through and build and, and grow with that. And so far, so good. I don't get a sense of things, you know, falling apart there or anything negative to get in the way that will suddenly say, you know, thank you, but no thank you. And that's metaphorically speaking, you know. So far, so good. You know, there. Yes, I'm glad, Nupur. Thank you for that confirmation. Uh, you're welcome. See, okay, you did hear me, but I'm glad for that. Uh, Nupur, let's see. Um, hmm. In regard to your next question here. All right, Nupur, um, for here, right at the moment, I don't get a sense that there will be, you know, um, anything happening in that area right away. I'm not getting a sense of that. I'm asking my guides here you know, for some sort of assistance, some sort of message for you to help give you a little guidance. Through. So are you, are you hoping for a little girl? Because I'm seeing a lot of pink, your know, energy suddenly appear before me. So it looks like you're hoping for a little daughter, um, which is promising because there the pink energy is very strong as I see it approaches. That's a good sign. Doesn't mean that's going to happen immediately, but I do get a sense of pink energy and that that is hoped for, you know, for you, especially if it's just you hoping for that. And that means that there's promise as to when it's not immediately, not in the next few weeks either. So you're going to have to keep, as they say, trying, relax about it, because the more relaxed you are with these things, the better opportunity then for that to happen. We make the body tense, you know, tight about these things, because uh, uh, preoccupation with this situation, um, tension over it, worry, it tends to shut down your system, and it does not allow for conception to occur easily. So remember that. So be relaxed about it. Give it to higher power. That will help ease the situation. But I do get a sense of pink you know, for you. So let's see what happens here. Should that happen in the next few months or so? Let me know for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nupur, I don't know about that. I think it'd be too soon. I know that in your religion and your culture, if I'm not mistaken, there is a belief system for that and, and realistically so because I know that that does con you know, has happened you know, to others. 
and not just from your background or your you know or your spiritual beliefs but from anywhere or whatever that sometimes you know those loved ones that have passed have returned in some way or form to our families um I'm not picking up a sense of that too strongly, however. I think grandma needs time to really be there. I don't feel that she's going to be spirit going to come back immediately or anytime too soon. She needs to process and she needs to be there. She needs to connect there. There's more for her there to do. So I don't expect that to happen. Um, Nupur, I'm not getting a real sign about that except maybe a few months or so. So let's see. So let's see about the pink. I do get the sense of pink, however, which is very promising. Very lovely, by the way. And let me see what else. Let's see if anyone else has any questions. Okay. There <laughs> I see your link, Angel. Thank you so much. That's a very clever name. Very, very, very nice. Very, very nice. It draws attention. And watches as well. Interesting. Very interesting. When I have a chance, you know, later in the weekend, I'll have a look at it, you know, and see. Lovely picture of you, by the way, too. You're just getting younger and younger every time. Uh, okay, Nupur. So don't be disappointed or discouraged, Nupur. Remember, Grandma just passed two days ago. We have to give her time. The transition is still fresh and new. There's a lot, sometimes that happens when the soul departs and there's a lot there for them. We have to make sure that they are set comfortably and, and blessed. You're welcome, Angel. There's a lot going on with you, Nupur. Lots of uh, things are happening in your life, my goodness. A lot of change, a lot of things, a lot of hopes, a lot of hopes there. Um, let's see. Hmm. All right, Nupur, for that question, um, give it a little bit more time. You know, don't be disappointed if it doesn't come in exactly on Monday, okay? It may take a little longer than that. Also, just keep other uh, offers, you know, open or options available, you know, too. You know, I'm not getting a sense that immediately on Monday, Monday, you'll hear something. So just be alert to that. Uh, Zia, let's see. You're welcome, Angel. <laughs> but it's true. Uh, Zia, uh, for Jade, um, all right, um, hmm. have we been a bit like with Jade, and I'm just, I'm talking about her in particular, um, a little heavy in the energy there, there a, there's a disappointment or something recently there, a discouragement, somehow I'm picking up on you know, there. But this is a minor issue. This is because young people, you know, are very emotional and whatever. And sometimes things, they, something happens and they get disappointed. Or they kind of get a little like low or shut down in energy a bit. So um, that's what I'm picking up there. But this will pass. This is nothing major or serious. This is just young people being very young. You know, ch ch children being children, you know. So a little low in the energy there, but she needs to rise. Do something to pick up, you know, her spirits a bit. You're very good at that. And you know what to do. No one knows Jade better than you. And that should pick up moment. I mean, I get a feeling of that for some reason. Pisces energy and the fish for some reason come in as I'm saying about this for some reason. There's emotions. It's an emotional issue here. But something that will pass, okay? Um, one. One. Very feeling kind of just to herself which is typical for her, but there was something there with emotion and then just one for some reason that makes sense. So if somebody said something to her, somebody disappointed her in some way, you know, it will pass. It will pass. Just give her some support. It's nothing to be concerned about. And the rest of the way, she'll be fine. You know, there's lots going on with Jade, a lot of new things, a lot of learning about herself. So there's a lot there going on. She's starting, reaching the point where she's starting to break open you know, with herself and get out there more and do. So that's another thing as well, you know, with her too. So expect that in the next few months to be happening more and more, you know, also with her there. Let me see, as we're here connecting with spirit or so, um, and you know, Zia, you have a lot of support. Nupur, you're also very open of mind as I'm getting a sense of things here. You're very much into believing into the spirit realms and things. You've had 
your own experiences, also have a strong belief you wish to know more as well. And I feel that you have a great sense of belief and openness to all of this. Very, a great deal of, of faith, which is lovely to experience as I'm picking up on your energies here. So this is lovely to, to hear uh, and to experience for you. So everybody here is pretty much pretty open here and, and loving here also. Um, Angel, I'm getting a sense a bit as we're talking a bit that mother, mother's energy is kind of presenting a bit. So just letting you know that she's, you know, aware of you and just close by. You're also supporting you along the way. Okay. And so mother is, you know, with you and doing just lovely and is embracing, is always embracing all of you always together she's always with all of you as she was here you know, she's there and she's enjoying seeing the children grow and she's participating even though i'm sure you must feel and get a sense of of mother okay and she's definitely with all of you and getting a sense i'm sure the children feel something about mother too they must um both your children must feel something about grandmother because I get a sense of that really strong. Her presence is there a lot. And she's very much, you know, part of the family and embracing all of you and seeing all of this, you know, happening. So she hasn't like disappeared and gone off and, you know, and not really being aware. Very, very much, you know how she was. And, um, and very much so still, but in a more loving, more tranquil, more peaceful way. Okay, she no longer carries the angst, as I'm getting a sense of, that she had while she was here. And because there was always some sort of a worry or concern or something, as I'm getting a sense, you know, here, as I'm picking up on this, here, no matter what. And that's gone. That's no more. That's been resolved. She's received the answers to those worries and those concerns that she had when she was here. That is no longer a, pro a problem, no longer a concern, okay? She's all right. She's more at peace, for sure. Um, and other angels of spirit for you, angel, that are there too. Rest assured they're with you too and watching over you too, okay? So be assured of that. Um, I see Jade is turning 13. Oh, my God, already? Caramba, that's something else. Oh, good heavens. I, so thank you for reminding me. Oh, you want to, oh, that's so lovely of you to do that. Um, I have to think about something. I don't know. Um, um, I'll see if I can answer you tomorrow. I, I will remember. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'll, 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 private, I'll private messenger you something once I think of something. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, an animal. <laughs> animal. So we'll, we'll see about that. Um, really? Oh, good to know that Juliet looks like mother. Good, good, good. Yes, yes, she was a worry ward, I see. Um, it's been a long time, you know, since, you know, I connected with mother, so I don't, and I wasn't always there around you so much, so I don't know all the details, you know, of that. But, um, but she's not that way anymore, fortunately. That's gone. That's gone, luckily. That's gone. She worries, you know, she worries for you, but not in the same way as she worried when she was here, just for you to know. Okay, thank you, Zia. That's a, oh, thank you. That's a good idea. Thank you. I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> I'll think of anything. I know you can do anything. So um, I'll think of something and I'll let you know by tomorrow for sure. Thank you. I'm going to make it something meaningful. Um, let's see. So we have that there. So we have spiritus around all of you, which is lovely you know, to witness and to experience. Um, let me see. As I'm connecting here a bit for the people that are here this evening, just go back a bit. I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Um, so, Valerie, you got your answers already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, how interesting, Azia. But then again, your family is very interesting when it comes to this area of creativity and things. So that must have been a spirit animal. You know, for her, always building things. Very fun and gregarious. Very responsible and loving, otters are. Very resourceful and self-reliant. 
you know, also. They take very good care of themselves. They take beautiful care of their children, you know, also. They're wonderful mothers, otters, which I know your mother was to you. And, and to Jade as grandma, you know, also. So I can see, and very gregarious and very fun and very loving. I didn't know your mother, obviously, uh, but I just get a sense of her as I connect for you uh, with her. And um, I did get to meet her once, you know, briefly. Luckily, I'm very glad about that. I'm happy I got to meet Mother once. And um, so there was this gregarious side to her and fun, loving side to her. You know, so that makes sense why she would connect with the otters, a very unique and unusual connection. But then again, your mother was a very unique and unusual person in a way. And in another way, she was just very normal. You know, also, you know, too. So there was both sides, but well, you have an interesting family, the creative side and then the regular side, you know, also all of them, you know, have that. Uh, good night, Angel. Thank you for joining. I'm glad that you got several messages here for you this evening. Sleep well. Okay. Take that with you. Have peace and sleep well. Um, so we're, so we're preaching 1047. So we have some time left. So let's see who, and it's a little late, so I guess some people are kind of shut off that they didn't expect me to be here at this hour. Um, but we'll see. But like I get, this should be the last time we should have such difficulties with this program. Um, we'll just go back to doing the traditional Zoom and Facebook, as we doing before, and see what's up there. We'll be doing more spot readings, by the way, next week. So that's where I'm devoting my energies for the next month. You know, which is to do spot readings, you know, for people out there. I want to get that going more and doing more of that for all of you guys out there. Again, if you want more in-depth one-on-one -on -one readings, you can connect with me on my Facebook page, the Angelus Colon Trans Psychic Express, and just let me know. Date, times, whatever, and I'll provide details you know, to you about how we can connect and make that happen. So those of you who are on this page, you know where to reach me, obviously. And this will be connecting on YouTube as well, so I'll make that known too. Uh, let's see. Oh, Zia, you have a story. Let's see. Uh, ah. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. How fascinating. For some reason, that connected for your mother. That rang a bell for her for some reason. Hmm. So that's interesting. For some reason, she had that connection. So, and that's why she had them. There's like a totem animal, you know, for her. So it's fascinating, you know, to hear ostracized otters. Hmm. Could be a number of reasons why. Because you don't know the reasons. They didn't tell you that in the zoo. It's difficult to know. Um, my only suggestion for you is to do a Google search and see and put in that, you know, about otters and, and the zoo or whatever, just what could make an otter be, let's say, um, isolated you know, from others in the community. Otters are pretty independent from what I do know. They don't really connect with community very much, except for, you know, two at a time. And that's for breeding purposes. And but when it comes to like socializing or social network for otters, from what I understand, they're not very communal that way. They're very more to themselves. They're not like elephants that have herds, you know, or um, or what are animals? Well, or wolves or have packs. They're not known for being in large numbers, you know, together. So it's fascinating to hear about ostracize. So that must be something more with the zoo in some way. Interesting to hear. Uh, but that was significant for mother. That was her connection for the animal. I hope you do have an otter or so representation or more in your home to celebrate mother. That's the way of bringing her closer to you and keeping that energy going. Put a little otter somehow or draw one, you know, and put it in Jade's room. A little depiction there. That way it keeps grandma's energy there watching over her. You know, too. And it's a bit unobtrusive, you know, so it's not, you know, in the way it doesn't have to be a large picture, not an eight by eleven or so, whatever. You know, but something small, but something cute. You know you can do that. You're a wonderful artist. And put it in her room. That'll bring grandma's energy there too to watch and protect. 
brings love and comfort into the environment. Yes, yes, I'm glad that that makes sense to you. Good. So does anyone else out there have any more questions for spirit for our connections here? Can I even find a few spirits here? So they've been present for you, luckily, and they've made their presence known to me. Also here, I'm, I'm picking up here a visual of a Volkswagen bug, and I mean the car, the famous Volkswagen. You know, bug. I forgot what it was exactly, exactly called. It was a Volkswagen bug, obviously. I'm seeing a little Volkswagen bug for some reason. And orange, then kind of greenish. And I'm picking up these visuals just for some reason. Does that make sense to anyone out there? Any connection with a Volkswagen car? Particularly the famous one known as the bug. Because I'm getting a visual with that right now. So if anyone can make sense of that, if you can claim that, please type that in. Because that's coming through vividly for me right now. And I'm receiving it here. I can feel it here, right here, my solar plexus. So I'm receiving that energy. So for some reason, that type of vehicle makes sense to someone out there. I'm receiving that message. So if that does, don't hesitate. I don't see everybody on the chat line. I don't know how many people are watching me at this moment. So there may be some of you out there that might be, you know, stealth that I don't know. So I'm putting it out there to any of you. So if you do have some sort of a connection with that, please let me know. Because that has come up, you know, greatly there. Okay, thank you, Zia. Right. So it's not you, but it's, it may be to someone else out there or someone that one of you is connected with. In some way, they may not be here in the audience with us, but you may know of something, of someone that you knew that had a connection with the Volkswagen bug in some way um, from the past, present, that I just keep getting that energy, that energy, that energy. I'm picking up someone male here associated with this, you know, also. So this is for a male figure, you know, here associated with this Volkswagen. So that offers a little bit more of energy. So he's standing right next to it, by the way. I see a tall, dark-haired uh, young man uh, standing here. This could have been when he was younger. He may not be this age anymore. This may relate to the past in some way. Um, kind of slender dude, young. So if that helps you in some way, that's another visual that's associated with this. I'm getting a feeling that this was past, a past experience but it was significant. So if you don't know at the moment, it may come to you later on. That is very common with these things, with these types of uh, readings. If it does come through, it, may, it, it connects. You just let me know. Write me a fast message on Messenger. And if that connects, I'll see what more I can connect from there and provide you know, a private spot reading for you right there on Messenger if necessary as it comes through. So we have that going. So we are in the month of March. We are in the month of St. Patrick. We're in the month of endings and new beginnings. This is the final draw for winter. The last few weeks, the last few days, actually, we're in late winter. Winter is finally going to depart and spring will be arriving. I do believe on March 20th this year. So it's about a little week, a week or so away. So the great winter that we've had of 2020, 2021 is about to depart, at least for the first half of 2021's winter, because we'll be seeing winter once again towards the end of this year when it returns in December. So it's the only season that we know that has you know, two appearances in one year. Yeah towards the beginning of the year, the first half of the year, and then it comes in towards the very end you know, of the year. The other seasons are within one year, but the season of winter crosses, you know, years from one year to the next. So that's what makes this particular time period here in the Northern Hemisphere as special. I'm sure in the Southern Hemisphere as well, you know, also it traverses through two time periods as well, two year periods rather as well for them too. So as the Northern Hemisphere starts to waken up again anew with new life, vitality, and the sun, uh, the Southern Hemisphere says farewell to summer 
and thus their fall it begins to take place. So the quiet time for them, you know, begins. They've had an incredible summer over there this year, certainly better than last time, minus the pandemic, obviously. So they're going to a great shift as well in the southern portion of the world. For here, it's new beginnings and a fresh start, and all things great. So far, we have positive signs in many different ways coming. Yes, we're excited too because the light is returning. And speaking of the light returning, don't forget to turn your clock you know, forward, I do believe, one hour because the springtime is starting once again in the United States. So it's turning your clock forward one hour. So we lose an hour of sleep technically, unless if you're careful about that, go sleep a little earlier. So that's tomorrow night, Saturday. I do believe that's at 2 a.m. or 3 p.m. or so. Things are changing so much, I'm not really sure. I know it used to be 2 a.m. when the time period, you know, changed. So be aware of that. So as always, make sure that your clocks are changed at that time. Check the batteries for those clocks that do have batteries. Make sure you have fresh batteries. Uh, make sure that for those who have, you know, um, carbon monoxide uh, alarms or whatever, change the batteries for that too. I will be purchasing batteries for mine tomorrow and looking at my clocks closely. So you want to stay in alignment you know, with the sunlight and with the time period. This is a big period of change coming upon us. March is always that way, March through April. It's the big jolt, as I call it, of the seasonal change. So whenever we have you know, seasons changing, it is a jolt to one system besides you know, to the world. So things start to happen. We've had a lot happening anyway this past winter, a lot of energy shifts. We're getting a little bit more used to them the past year because of the pandemic experience. Lots of energy changes. It always causes, you know, commotion in one system. So be aware. We do have the pandemic still, you know, going on. And now we have this energy shift also. So let's try to be cognizant of it. Go with it, ride with the energies to make it easier on your physical and biochemical system. So it's not such a jolt to you, even to your psyche, because that always causes, you know, a change. So you want to try to be smooth in this transition. We have enough going on in the world as it is. We want to be easy with this. We want to be gentle and nurture ourselves so that we can have a nice, smooth transition for the new season. So it's a very important time you know, for all of us. Let's see what happens in the next two to three weeks, big time you know, here. We have a good month with us. We've had a good moon so far. We're going to have another good full moon You're coming our way also in Libra. That's towards the end of the month. It's very, very promising, very bright. And we've had a pretty relatively easy time of it uh, this month. And astrologically. No planets are retrograde, fortunately. That helps. It brings more an even keel to the energies that we're living under. Good opportunities as well our way. So open, be focused, and be clear. Uh, we're at 1059 right now, so I'm going to be broadcasting for another 13 minutes before we call it an evening for this week. So in honor of St. Patrick, if anyone else has any more questions that they'd like answers to from Spirit, they are here with us. And we're tapping into the Celtic energies, the Druids, so powerful. And whenever we connect with, you know, Druid energy or so, it's always very enriching. It always fills us with a sense of lush, beauteous energy, very powerful, very loving in its way, very rooted to the earth because the Celtics were people of the earth and they revered everything that dealt with the planet, the trees, the rocks, the grasses, the mountains, the monoliths that they built in Great Britain or so were of the rocks, sacred rocks. We have, you know, Stonehenge, the wheel, as I call it, the wheel of power. I don't know if anybody else calls it that way, but from my past experience uh, with that, you know, I've always felt it as a wheel of power. Others have called it a great you know, astrological sundial. You know, from the ancients when they built those so long ago, we still don't know the origins exactly. You know, of you know these you know, of these incredible structures in Great Britain. More and more is being discovered, however. So eventually, we may get answers. But in the meantime, there's great mystical energy to them. 
I had the blessing of going to visit a Stonehenge in person back in 2018. And I felt a tremendous energy that was very futuristic, you know, there. As ancient as it was, and ancient as they, you know, ar archaeologists are saying, I got an energy of sophistication, of advanced intellect and knowledge, a great future-oriented energies and technologies you know, there. That wheel is more than just stones there. It has significance that tapped into technological things, things that could tell us more about beyond space, beyond time, uh, connecting, let's say, with others from other dimensions, other realms. There is magic there. Also, it reminds me also of the period of Saint of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And I have some sort of an energy connection with that regarding things pertaining to these monoliths, these dolmens that are found in Great Britain. There's a connection somehow with that also. And the ancient land of Avalon, you know, also. So there's connections there. I don't think that Avalon and even King Arthur were so mythological as they think. And there's been bits and pieces that have been coming regarding, you know, the truth and reality of, you know, King Arthur. I call him Saint Arthur for some reason. Uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and, and Merlin and those incredible beings there. There's more going on there that needs and will be discovered eventually. Yes, it does, Zia. It, it does, indeed. There is something there. Definitely there was something there. I brought energy back from there, from that experience. I want to go back again. I need to go back again to explore more, to have more time to devote to exploring about these monoliths of England and of Great Britain. So I intend at some point to return you know, to Great Britain and not only just visit England, but also Scotland and Ireland as well and Wales. Wales has tremendous mystical energy and history there, you know, also. I need also to go to England and to Cornwall, England, because I need to call, I've been called spiritually to go, to go and visit to Tangel Castle in Cornwall, which is the mythological home of King Arthur. And that is something I need to do there as well. Oh, I'm glad that you've gone to Scotland. I know it's very, I understand it's very beautiful. It's also very powerful in the spirit and its history. It's quite fascinating, quite stunning. I, I am aware of that. I have a friend from Ireland and you know, he's told me some bits and pieces about, you know, there and his upbringing there. I have a friend who went to Scotland a few years ago and she, you know, was captivated by that, by the energies there and by the space and the great spirituality there. So I'm very well aware. I need to go visit these places myself. So speaking about St. Patrick, we have that spirituality working throughout Ireland, of course and Great Britain, and throughout the world. St. Patrick, as I said earlier, was quite revered you know, for all of his goodness, all of his works, all of his blessings, the miracles that are attributed to St. Patrick. He was such a good spirit and a good soul. And there's more to find out about St. Patrick. We don't know everything. We've so long ago. And we've been revering him for over a thousand years. And there's more history that needs to be discovered. You know, about him as well, and I'm sure that in time it will. And remember that he came from, you know, from Roman Britain. He wasn't even born originally in Ireland. So we need to tap more into that as well, what exactly Roman Britain was. And that goes back into the time period of Hadrian, the emperor of Rome, who had a strong, you know, significance and left a mark in Great Britain. We have Hadrian's Wall, after all throughout Britain. And Hadrian was always, I don't call him a spirit for my sake, that I have a connection with. I understand there's something there. I understand he wasn't the most pleasant king or emperor, 
of Roman history, as I learned later on. But for some reason, when I tapped into his energy years ago, I had a pleasant energy with him and a connection somehow, and helpful also. So I need to discover even more about that particular emperor from Roman Britain times. But St. Patrick is the one that we're focusing on and his energies and his blessings and we like to tap into that and just to be express gratitude and ask for his assistance, his guidance, his blessings as we need it and pray to him for those who do, you know, for to answer you know, our blessings. You can meditate to St. Patrick and meditation will bring hopefully answers and responses you know, from him. So we pray to ask, we meditate to receive. So since we are in the time period of this saint, this is what we rest in. This is the energies that we invoke. This is what we experience at this moment in time. So I see that my time will be coming to a close very soon. So again, if there's anyone out there who has any last question to ask for a spot reading, now is the time. I'm not going to go over 11.12. I'm going to keep this strictly at one hour due to the lateness of the time. Next week, I will be on, I hope to be on at 8 p.m. And everything should go well. And then we can certainly stay a little more than an hour, then it's earlier. But at this time, it's late. People are tired from the week's work. Uh, they have other things to do, probably other things to watch. So, you know, we'll respect that. And we'll keep that going there. So, again, last call. Any last spot readings? Anything that you'd like to know more of? Anything that Spirit will tap into for you? Um, the spirits are still with us here. Some a little weaker or so, a little drained if they've gone off or so. But we're connecting here beautifully. I'll be celebrating St. Patrick's next week wearing green, of course. And getting some Irish soda bread this weekend. And even going to McDonald's, which I rarely do. Except usually this time of the year I do go to get my green shamrock shake, which I know they usually have. So I'll get one or two of those. I'll probably go... Also to the other one, I guess, to, what's the other one that offered green shakes as well? Um, I don't know if it was Burger King or it was, um, what's the one that's green? Oh my God, the coffee place, the Starbucks. I think they offered a green shake of some kind. So I'll pop in either this weekend, tomorrow or so, get myself a green shake and celebrate. And good night, Zia. Thank you for joining me, Miha. Thank you for participating. I hope that what Spirit provided you was, is helpful for you as always. And I'll get back in touch with you tomorrow about, you know, um, a drawing, okay? And what, what subject, okay, for sure. So we'll connect next tomorrow. Good night. And um, so we'll do that. Little things like that to bring the Celtic energies and St. Patrick's energy is always good to do. It draws and brings those things. Remembrance, celebration, uh, tokens as well, leprechauns. I love leprechauns. And focusing in, reading up on them, um, tapping into them, posting them on Facebook. I love doing that. I know that there's something there. You know, in Ireland, they have a leprechaun and one particular tree there that we can look into live. It's on 24 hours a day. But people have said they have seen and had experiences, you know, with leprechauns, you know, there. And they're magical beings. And many people have seen them, have ex had experiences with them. Some positive, not some not so positive. But nevertheless, they have seen them and know that these are people that are not crazy, but respectable individuals and um, that are sane. So when we have a number of people who are sane and credible, you know, and living their lives beautifully, as I like to say it, um, there's something to it. We have to believe them. So I like to tune into the leprechauns and their energy, you know, also. And I'm sure that they've traversed, you know, Ireland. I'm sure they've been popping around here and all over the world in one form or another, too. So we have them and those incredible beings, you know, also. Let's not forget the beings of the Celtic religions also. We can also remember them also and bring them in to this energy field at this time, the Celtic and the Druid energies, too, and do meditations, you know, to them as well to help us out at this time since so much of the mindset is going to the island of Ireland at this time, we can also tap into their energy more 
and connect with them and ask for their aid, their guidance, and messages. So it is good to always connect. So on that note, is it 1111 now, which is 1111, you know, power number in numerology, um, master teacher, master educator, magical. And uh, so we'll tap on that. So we have one minute left. So at this point, we'll conclude our program for this evening. Thank you to those who participated. Thank you to those in spirit for being here with me, my guides, and those who came with those who are here who are asking questions and providing answers and questions and messages you know, for you here. And thus, you know, we'll conclude the program. Next week, we'll be on once again. I'll be doing it. Um, I'll start at Zoom for a bit and see how that goes, okay? And from there, then we'll jump it to Facebook. I like to do it that way. And then we'll be posting once again on Facebook, you know, afterward, during and afterward, as well as the Metaphysical Communion channel on YouTube. So for those of you who came in late or part of the way here, you can catch the program later on. You know, they're either on Facebook or on YouTube and Metaphysical Communion. Uh, there's always messages and things that you hear that might connect for you. That's why I... You know, I tell you to look into this. You know, sometimes a reading for one can have significance for several. I posted some information out there also for those, you know, to perhaps if you see it later on, if what I said regarding certain things that I talked about earlier, if it connects with you, you know, let me know. You can private message me you know, on Facebook and I'll connect with you that way. Uh, thank you, Zia. Thank you. I'm glad that I'm. Good night.